We would like to welcome you to Newburgh Friday night service. Tonight we have the ushers bringing the service to you. We're going to start in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, O oh God, for this service. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that something be said to reach your people. Lord, we pray that your word prick the heart of man that they may repent. Oh, God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we want to thank you and welcome you to Newburgh Friday Night Services. Not only the ushers, but the nurses as well. We have um, Sister Johnson here to my left. I'm Sister Person, and to my right, you have Sister Lucas. And tonight, um, our ushers and nurses will be uh, coming forth from the book of Psalms. We're going to come from Psalms 121. And it reads as, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the word of the Lord be blessed. And again, I read Psalms 121 in its entirety. And we know that Psalms 121 is talking about, um, it's considered to be categorized as one of the songs of an essence of um, a traveling um, scripture. It was preferred um, to the children of it, Jerusalem as they were traveling. And it's like, it's a hidden uh, treasure, a promise for um, the children of Israel, I mean, sorry, of Jerusalem when they were um, traveling through and God is just our help. This is, this is basically what the scripture is saying. But our topic today is, are we living or just existing? And in order to live is not to die. And existing is being present within a period of time. But if you um, consider life, it's just a journey. This is not our home. We're traveling through here on earth. Because heaven is our home. So when we ask the question, are we living or just existing? According to Proverbs 8 and 35. For whosoever findeth me, findeth life. And whosoever obtaineth favor of the Lord. So all that's saying is, if you want to live, you have to come through Christ. You're going to live through Christ. And a lot of people today, we must determine if we're going to live or exist. What kind of quality of life are you living? Are you living for the Lord? Are you truly living? Because according to God's word, you are not living unless you come through Christ. All right. Amen. 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 Well, um, We have to trust God in order to, to live and give our life to the Lord in order to live. If we don't uh, trust him, then no, we're not living. He, um, he has to be our focus. And in order for us to do that, we have to be in his word. Amen. And also, if we look in Job 14 and 1, it says, man that is born of a woman is of few days and is full of trouble. We're going to experience some things through life with God 
and without God, no matter what. When you're born, you're going to go through things on earth. But in order for you to live on earth and go through every test and trial, and tribulations, wouldn't you rather go through it for God? At least you know that you're going to live, you're going to have eternal life. Because also in the scripture, um, Jesus, he came to save us and to give us life. And that's why God sent his son to us when we talk about John 3.16. And I know a lot of us know that scripture. We know that scripture, some of us by heart, even when we was little. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then we go down to John 3 and 17. It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn you. So God don't want you to just exist in this period of time because when you're existing, you just here for a period of time. What are you doing while you're here? And in John 3 and 17, he said, Jesus, this is Jesus' words, because they said, For God sent not his son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. 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 You know, I, I was uh, on this uh, topic. Um, mm -hmm. I was uh, thinking about Things in the past four years, I, I'm not even going back to the death of my parents, but just in the past four years, I was in a bus accident. I had about five falls, and I'm a survivor two times of COVID. And my time has come where I'm just, I go to work, church, and back home. Barely do I shop. And I told the Lord, I do not just want to exist. I want to live. Amen. God is a God of the living. And I just told him, I want to live. I don't just want to exist sitting in a room, ain't hardly doing nothing and life going on around me and I'm saved. Lord, I want to live. Not just to live, just existing. I want to look to God and live. Amen. Yep. When my husband passed, um, the Lord told me to live. So Every day, I don't take it for granted. I try to live every single day and do um, yes. what he says because I could have sat at home and just dried up, but that's not what he wants. He wants us to live Amen. and show an example to somebody else, you know, how to live. But we have to learn how to live through Christ. And like you said, we, uh, when man come from a woman. God knew our lives before we even got here, before we was even a seed in our mother's womb. Yes, he knew, he knew us. already. And he knew the plans that he had for us. Yes, yes. And that plan wasn't for us to sit and die. Amen. Amen. But when we, when we think about the purpose of life and why God sent his son Jesus, and that's for us to live. So if you want to live, then you want to live in Christ. Yes. And, and we know that um, the job of the enemy, like John 10 and 10, it says, the thief come not but for to steal and to kill. Yes. And to destroy. Yes. And it says, I come that they might have life. Yes. God come that we might have life. Mm -hmm. He don't want us to sit and be depressed. Yes. He don't want us to feel like, there is no hope because yes. he said, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. So Jesus letting us know that he came so we can live. Yes. We don't have to die and fall out because the test and the trial and the tribulations of the world. In Psalms 1 and 21, if you go back, it also tells us that what to do is encouragement. Say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which come in my help. My help come from the Lord. All right. So, no, we're not just going to exist. We're not going to be depressed. We're going to experience things, test trials, death. I mean, all kinds of things that happen in life we may not be exempt from. But you're going to lift up your eyes. Yeah, you're going to feel that thing. you human. Yes. Yeah. But God is our help. Yes. He's a keeper. 
my help and tool. 121 and 2 said, my of Psalms. Psalms 121 and 2 says, my help coming from the Amen. Lord, which made heaven and earth. Yes. So we have help. You don't have to exist. You don't have to dwell where you at and be back and forth in your feelings and in your emotions. Are you living or just existing? Amen. You have to make that decision for yourself consciously because God is a protector. His son Jesus even prayed for us. I have a scripture here that I want to read to you guys about Jesus when he was here on earth and a conversation that he had with his father about his people. Let's go to John chapter 17. Because it's important that we know that God didn't um, allow Jesus just to come and die for our sins and then go back to heaven and leave us here by ourselves. Because he didn't. He left the comforter. He left the Holy Ghost. He left the Bible here for us. Yes. He left his word here for us. Amen. To encourage us. So we don't have to allow the enemy to overtake us. Because we know he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, John 17 and 11. Let's start there. Well, let's start at John 17 and 9. It said, I pray for them. This is Jesus, and he's having this conversation with God. He said, I pray for them. He's saying them. He's talking about us. He prayed for us. He said, I pray not for the world. Now, we're talking about people that come into Christ. So we, it's a difference if you're living in Christ or in, in existing. If you live and you're living in Christ. Now, if you're existing, I suggest you come and reconcile your relationship with the Lord so you can live with him and have covering because Jesus prayed for us. He said, I pray not for the world. He said, but for them which have has given me. He telling Jesus, I pray for the people that you gave me. All right. For they are thine. He said, they thine. And I and all mine are thine. So we belong to God. Yes, we do. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. You're living so God can get the glory out of your life. Yes. You're not just existing. You're not a mistake. You're not an oops baby. You're not, um, what do they call that, um, cursed. You know, some people just think they cursed, or, you know, they just hear. A mistake. <laughs> yes. But we live in to be God so that God can get the glory out of our life. Yes. And then he has a reward for us. Because he said that we can live eternally with him. But in the scripture, John 17 and 11 said, And now I am no more in the world. This is Jesus. He said, I'm not, my body is not walking with the disciples in the world. Now his spirit, God, Jesus is live forever. God live forever. Don't twist the word of God. He's just saying he's not walking down on this earth with us like this. But his spirit is. He said, but these are the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father. He's talking to God. Keep those. Keep them. Keep through thy own name those whom thy has given me. He said, keep them, God. He telling, Jesus is telling this to God. He said, keep them. That they may be one. As we are. So he's, we know that God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, is one in the Trinity, right? So Jesus is going to God. And he's saying, keep my people. Why they down here in this world, on this earth? Because we, when we read Psalms 1 and 21, we're talking about a journey. We're talking about people that's, that's traveling and they look I will look up my eyes unto the hills from which my help which from which cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which may heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved Amen. he that keepeth thee will not slumber All right. He's not and Jesus telling you right here in John 17 that he prayed to God that he keep us yes. in this world so if you want to be kept, you will be kept. You surrender your all to God. It's no goodness of your own, but God will keep you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. So you don't have to be out 
and, and just existing or just living life carelessly. God got a plan for your life. It's other scriptures that's coming to man, but I want to stay focused. God got a plan for your life, and time is winding up. So you need to make a decision. Do you want to live in Christ, or do you just want to exist Amen. in this world? And I'm, I'm thinking about Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let's go there. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. Let me see where I'm going. It's right here. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace yes. and not evil, to give you an expected end. So we got help in this life, and we don't just have to exist. Hey. Amen, Sister Lucas. Amen. Amen. We don't have to just exist. We don't have to just go through tests and trials. We can look up to the hills from which cometh our Amen. help. For our help cometh for the yes. Lord. Lord Jesus himself, yes. he prayed for us. He prayed for us. And then he had a conversation with God. Because we know they want already. But he said, let's include the ones that you have given unto me. He said, I'm not praying for the world. I'm talking about my people. Right. My people. So I, I'm, I'm asking you now to make a decision. How do you want to live this life? What kind of lifestyle are you living? Only you can determine that. Only you can make the decision to change that. Because God is not going to force anybody to do anything. He's, he's a good God. He's a just God. He has given each individual freedom. We have freedom to choose. We have freedom to decide how we want to live this life. Amen. We do. Amen. 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 So we don't have to exist. You, if you want to exist and just be a spot in the world, you can. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. There are so many scriptures that tells us how we are supposed to live. God wants us to live through him. It's also another scripture coming to me on how Jesus said, um, you got to come through me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you, you can't go over, you can't go under, right. you can't sneak around. You got to go through. In the door. You got to go. That's right. You got to go through God. You, come through right. the, you cannot. And he know if you plan. It's best not to even mess with it if you want to play about it and, and be this way one minute and another way. Because yes. time is winding up. Yes. Time is winding up. We can look around or we can see the signs of the time and things that are going on around us. And, it, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's something. It's amazing how you... Even turn on the news and you see the signs of the time. I mean, when I was younger and growing up, they were saying Jesus is coming back. And I would wonder, you know, in the scripture it tells you what would happen, what would take place when Jesus is coming back. And it will be able to know. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about life, are you living or just existing, don't let your time run out. Of mm -hmm. And you haven't made the right choice and the decision to come to Christ. Amen. 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 Well, you know, people take step for granted because they actually think that they do have time. Even though you see the calamity in the world and the stuff that's going on, he said that there be wars and rumors of war. Oh, yes. Well, you have that now, you know. Yes. He said that um, our kids would turn against the mother, mother against the child and father. Well, we have that too. So... If you're really, really serious about your life and living your life and not being mixed up in all this stuff that's going on, Christ is the only way. He's Amen. the only answer. Amen. He's all we have. Amen. That's true. Amen. That is true. And you know what? That, um, the scripture that backs what you said up is in Matthew 24, 6 and 7. See, you know what? 
You, we are not just talking. These no. are scriptures. This is God's word that's backing up the signs of the time. I didn't just put this right here. Matthew 24, 6 and 7 say, And ye shall hear of wars and, and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled. You know why we're not troubled? Because we can look up to the hills. To the hills. Amen. Psalms 121. Where I have come from? The Lord. From the Lord, yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then Psalms 24 and 6 goes on and says, See that ye be not troubled. You ain't got to be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end, it got, listen to what Jesus said, not it's yet. not yet. All right. It's going to get worse than this. For nations shall rise against nations, nations yes. and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diving places. And it's happening. And it's happening. And you know, it's the most stuff going to happen too. And you know, I don't want to um, get all political or anything like that because... Um, I want to stay in my lane, but I saw something on news and um, something that Congress passed that the scriptures were talking about, um, about the shortening of the days. And I always wondered that when I was little, how are they going to shorten other days? Let's go to Matthew. So I'm going to tell you the scripture so it can back up what I'm saying. Matthew 24 and 22. In Matthew 24 and 22, it says, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. It's going to get so bad gonna have to that the Lord days. is going to have to shorten the days. But yes. then over here, he just let us know that's not the end yet, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about are you living or just existing, I'm, I'm making a point. My point is I was watching news, and you know how in spring, we spring forward, and in the fall, we fall back. They, on news, they had did a broadcast and they said something about they right. weren't going to um, do Try that anymore. Right. <laughs> right. So I what happens that. to that hour? You know, we, we said we got 24 hours in a day. What I, this is me just talking. I said, Lord, I got my Bible and I said, okay. We, we living in this day and time. Yes, you got to know what's going on around you. Make a wise decision. All the signs, all the writings on the wall. It's already there. Matthew 24 and 22 says, And expect those days should be shortened, that there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Do you know it's going to come to a day and time that people are going to want Jesus? They're going to be running, hiding on the rocks. Oh, you better right. call on God while he near. Because yes. when judgment comes, it's too late. Amen. It's too late when judgment comes. So we want to live in Christ. We want to be able to find Jesus while he's near. Amen. We want to be in a place that we can look up to the hills from which come our help. And Amen. God will help us. Yes. Amen. 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 So um, are you living or... Are you just existing? So you heard all these wonderful scriptures, and God already made a way for us. I'm just going to sum this up, and we're going to let you go. I was thinking about the people in the church. People come to church. Some of us come, we wear our feelings. We have different feelings. So we just sit in the service, listen to the service, and we just let, instead of getting into service, we let the time pass us by? Are we living or just we existing? Are we coming to church just to say we come to church? You better get in the service and get something from the Lord. Some feel I'm not good enough so I'll sit back and just look. No. Get into the service. God wants you. He's giving you a chance. Don't come here with that attitude. Some, Lord, I'm just here. Some, I'm deep, and you know what you, you know you empty as you can be. You know you empty. Lord, I'm just here to hear the word. No, the Lord wants you to come here, and he wants you to enjoy his word. He wants you to live for him. We all go through things in life. So don't let life get you down. 
the time is near. She read you to you about the signs of what's coming. And I was looking at uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. She spoke on that we are troubled. We are troubled on every side, Amen. yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. He hasn't forgotten us. We're cast down, but not destroyed. The Lord got us. He got your back. As, as the kids say, I got your back. God got our backs. I was looking at, um, over here at, um, that Psalms, that, that Psalms 118. It, that one, the first and second verse is really going on today. I heard it in the, in the service earlier today. So you better look to the hills. I will lift my, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. We must look to God. That's the only way we're going to make it. And I was looking at one, Psalms 118, 17. I want to get it right. Uh, hold on a minute. Because I, I know I've been saying what I want to say, and then y'all be saying, she ain't quoting that right. Psalms 118, 17. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He's already made a way for, for us. We don't have time to just exist. Time is winding up. We thank you for taking the time out to be with us on tonight. And we're going to give it to Sister Johnson, our nurse, our sweet nurse, so she can close us out. You Keep us Amen. in your prayer. We have a work to do. We as ushers and nurses, our jobs are cut out for us. Keep us in your prayer and pray that we'll stay humble before God. Sister Thank Johnson. You. Okay, you can bow your heads. Father God, we come today. We thank you, oh God, for your word. We thank you, God, for allowing us to have this time that we may speak to your people, oh God. I'm asking you to give them ears to hear and a heart to obey. Lord, your doors is always open. And your hands are always stretched out wide. Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to bring us in. Bring us into the shelter where you can cover us, oh God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Touch the Modest's family right now. Yes, God, you know what's going on. Only you know. Amen. And I'm asking you to go in that household, oh God. Thank you, God. Go in that household, God, and touch right now. Yes. In Jesus' in name. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you for this thank opportunity you, again. Thank you, God, thank you. that your word thank may you, be spread Jesus. out through the land. Thank you, God. Thank you. Have mercy thank on you, us, Jesus. God. Forgive us for all sin thank that we you, might Jesus. have done Jesus. that we know and that we don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. In thank Jesus' you, name, Jesus. amen. amen.